What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about speculating character releases, or at least the characters that I am speculating will be released in 2025. Six characters, one from each class, that I would like to see released as a seven star in the year 2025. So I'm on Aunt May right now, and if we look at the available seven star roster on Aunt May, it's pretty vast. It's 135, not including some of the newer characters, so this isn't even the complete list of available 7 stars. And there's quite a bit, I mean, ranging from champions like like Prowler, Onslaught, Venom, Titania, to Sauron, Civil Warrior, you know, Cap Sam Wilson, Gambit. There's, there's definitely a range of 7 star. I wouldn't say any of them are inherently bad. Outside of maybe, you know, Deadpool, who is a trophy champion that you had to buy. But, excuse me, outside of that, none of them are inherently bad. Okay, Venom the Duck is pretty bad. But, these are all the available 7 stars right now. There are so many 6 stars. There's over 276 stars available in the game. Every character, except for Labyrinth Ultron, is available as a 6 star. I, I believe that's correct. It might not be, but I'm pretty sure. I'm sorry. Every character but Labyrinth Ultron, Magic, and Quake are available as 6 stars, and then some of them are even available as 7 stars. So, this video is going to go through the class wheel and just talk about one champion from each class that I think should be a 7 star and that I predict will be a 7 star. So, it's a prediction slash hopeful type of video. So I'm just going to go down the class wheel from science down to mystic. And starting off in science, there's a lot of great science 7 stars. I mean, Quicksilver, one of my personal favorites. Spider-Punk, really solid. Titania, obviously one of the best. Void, incredible. Spot, amazing. Spidey 99, amazing. Silk, Spider-Ham, lots of great characters. But a character I think is long overdue as a 7 star is Cassie Lang. I think Cassie Lang would be such an amazing 7-star, either for, like, an Omega Days type event or a, a Titan Pool edition. I think Cassie would see such an explosion of use if she were to be released as a 7-star. What holds her back is she came out at a time where 6-stars were about to be eclipsed by 7-stars, and because she wasn't this unbelievably meta-defining character like future Ant-Man was at the time. She kind of got undershadowed, but Cassie is still very strong. Even at the 6-star rank 5 ascended level, Cassie puts up some incredible numbers, and she's very, very sustainable. Super tanky character. But Cassie, I feel, is one of those characters that, if she were to be released as a 7-star... The floodgates would open with Cassie players. She would see so much use, so much more investment at that 7-star level. And she doesn't necessarily need to be awakened. It's very nice to have. But she's kind of the perfect character for that special type of pool, like in Omega Days, like a Gifted Guardians, where you have a higher chance of getting that dupe because the pool is smaller. She would fit that mold perfectly. So for the science class, I think Cassie Lang would be a perfect addition to the 7-star pool in 2025. Looking at skill, skill's a tough one to pick because there's already a lot of really powerful skill champions in the 7-star class already. Bullseye, Crossbones, Masakre, Mantis, Shang-Chi, just to name a few, Black Cat. I think, realistically, realistically speaking, a character that I could see being added to the 7-star pool, 7-star availability in 2025, is Stealth Suit Spider-Man. I think this guy could be a, such an underrated nuke. He already is an underrated nuke in Battlegrounds specifically at the 6-star rank 5 ascended level. I have a 6-star rank 5 ascended Stealth Spider-Man, and I love him. And if he would be released as a 7-star, whether it would be a Titan Crystal, Special Pool, what have you, I would be chomping at the bit to get this guy. Because he... The dupe is is so not necessary unless you're high sig because the damage he has from his base kit is already so astronomically high. Couple in stat focus, couple in relics, and a 7-star rank 3 stealth suit Spider-Man would probably be 
the fastest skill attacker in Battlegrounds and one of the most insane skill attackers for like Alliance War, depending on the saga, because he's just so fast. He really is a skill version of Stark Spidey with a different ramp up. He ramps in less than 10 seconds, whereas Stark Spidey, he takes a little bit to get going. Stealth Spidey ramps so fast. And not only that, but his web character's debuffs, they have so much utility. Like the web foam, not only is it a slow, but it bypasses miss. So as long as you don't have class disadvantage, you can inflict a slow, which counters evade and unstoppable, as well as miss. So he's got three of the most annoying defensive mechanics countered immediately with one effect. Plus, you get the increased damage from the Fury and the Precision from the Special One. Of course, you're sacrificing some of the damage by not getting the Fragility, but the utility that this guy brings to the table, especially at a 7-star rank 3 level, the, the, the rank would offset the damage you're missing out from for going for the utility. And if you run the Scorpion Synergy, the Tranquilize, you can just keep the opponent enervated forever. So, yeah, I think Stealth Spidey would be such an incredible addition to the 7-star pool, and I would personally be very excited to get him, and I would be trying very hard to get him on my roster. So, Mutant. I'm not even going to waste any time. I think it's Apocalypse. Apoc, one of the best mutants in the game for a long time, but he's seen a decline in relevancy because of the game shifting away from synergy-based content. You know, Eternity of Pain and Battlegrounds... Those things don't allow for synergies, right? For the most part. Battlegrounds never does. So Apoc being a synergy-reliant character and a character that gives bonuses to his synergy mates kind of lost a little bit of his shine because he was so good in the meta where synergies were still very relevant. And, and in Alliance War, they still are, for sure. And I think he's probably still a very useful character Alliance War Attacker, if not the pre-fight, the Horseman of Apocalypse pre-fight is still extremely useful for mutants, but if Apocalypse was released as a 7-star, I think he would see a resurgence, and he would immediately be up at 7-star rank 3 for people, because he'd be a, another defender, he'd be a more worthy defender again, because you put the block pen stat focus for the special attacks, he's super tanky, he has native crit resistance, and he has such a massive health pool as well. At the 6-star rank 5 level, he has 80,000 health once he's ascended. So a 7-star rank 3 is probably looking at north of 100,000 health because he's just so tanky. And not only does he have the tankiness, not only does he have the defensive capability, but he's also a monster on offense. I know he still wouldn't be very useful in Battlegrounds unless there was like an Apocalypse Relic or something, but... Everywhere else, he would s see so much more use at the 7-star level because he'd want to use him. The damage bump would be there. And it's not like he doesn't need damage, you know, or it's not like he needs damage because with synergies, with the Stripe synergy specifically, he has plenty of damage. But I think he would see a resurgence of use and he'd, be, he'd become relevant again in the modern landscape of Marvel Contest of Champions if he would be released as a 7-star. I think the 6-star is holding him back because people don't want to invest. They'd rather invest in other 7-stars. But if Apoc was a 7-star, people, like me, would invest in him because he's still very useful. The utility he brings to the table is out of this world. And even in content like Battlegrounds, at a 7-star rank 3 level, he's probably a way more decent defender than he would be at 6-star rank 5 because you've got stat focus, you've got potential challenger rating, and he doesn't need to be awakened. The awakened ability is completely useless on defense, and it basically never comes into play on offense. So he'd be a perfect candidate for like a Gifted Guardians or Mega Days type event. So I'm hoping we see Apocalypse as a 7-star in the near future. Tech class... Tech's tough because most of the really good tech champions are already 7 stars, you know? The only ones I would say aren't would be maybe Future Ant-Man and a Ghost. I would say those two are not 7 stars yet, and maybe they should be. But I think out of the whole pool here, I think it is probably time that we see Future Ant-Man. And... I know he is one of those kind of meta-defining characters. He is extremely, extremely powerful. But I think the game is moving in a direction where 7-star rank 3 is becoming the norm, right? 7-star rank 3 is becoming way more typical for content, for offers, 
what people are looking for is 7-star rank 3s. And Future Ant-Man is still great at 6-star rank 5. Super powerful. Unbelievable utility. Great damage. But you're start you, there's starting to see a decline of 6-star champions in war rosters and battleground decks. Not overall, but 6-stars are just losing the race slowly but surely because seven stars are coming out and they're just too dominant the stat focus the challenger rating the health pool the additional rank bonus i think future ant-man although very powerful and i understand maybe not bringing him in 2025 i think just in the future they there needs to be a copy of future ant-man as a seven star to just maintain his relevance because once six star or once seven star rank fours enter the domain, and there are seven star rank four, you know, Venom, Stark, Spideys out there that can just nuke this guy in 25 seconds, he's gonna lose that defensive value in battleground specifically. In an alliance war, you know, if you're running power back boosts with uh, a powerful cosmic like a Hyperion or a Gladiator, and you start with a power star one, Future Ant Man is just he's gonna get annihilated, absolutely destroyed. At a six-star level. So if you want to keep him as a relevant defender and also keep him on the attack side as well, keeping that relevance, bring him as a seven-star. Because I think he's he's kind of in an interesting position because he is great on Awakened, but the Awakened ability adds so much to his kit that it is hard to want to invest in him without having him Awakened. The utility he gains is just astronomical. So... I think he'd be a perfect candidate for like an Omega Days type event if that were to happen next year or a Gifted Guardians against something like that in a limited pool. I think he'd be excellent for. I would not complain about seeing him in a Titan Crystal as well. I think that would be a wonderful move. I think Future Ant-Man is definitely worthy of being a 7-star at some point, and I'm hoping that that day comes sooner rather than later because I'd love to take him up to rank 3 myself. All right, last two classes here, Cosmic and Mystic. Cosmic is tough because, like I've already mentioned with a couple of previous classes, so many good Cosmic champions are already in the 7-star pool. Hyperion, Venom, um, Medusa will be very soon, Gladiator, Serpent, Corvus Glaive, Adam Warlock. I think, in terms of the Cosmic pool, Hulkling, he is too strong right now. I think Hulkling is just way too good right now to be a 7-star. Just... He needs a little bit more time. The seven star pool needs to expand further before we see Hulkling. One champion I think we should see is Gallen. Gallen is such an interesting character because he never really. I, I feel like there was such a a hype for Gallen when he first came out, and since that hype, he's never been as popular as he once was. You know, and that kind of sucks because. Gallon's really cool. He's super useful, very easy to play, good on offense and defense, and he needs to be a pain in the ass sometimes uh, uh, with the proper meta or on the proper node. He is quite the character, really a, a titan of a design. I think Gallon has lost a lot of his shine because he's only good in specific metas and specific situations at that six-star level. I know a 6-star rank 5 Ascended Gallon can take out most health pools in a single harvest if you build up enough planetary mass, but a 7-star rank 3 Gallon, now that right there, that's a hot commodity. That is a hot ticket item that I guarantee people would be frothing at the mouth to get, because he doesn't need to be awakened, but if you get him awakened, man, not only does he become a better defender, but he also becomes a better attacker as well, because he only needs to be at a certain sig level to benefit from the entirety of his signature ability. So, Gallon is my personal pick for a 7-star Cosmic to be released in 2025, and I would love to see him in a Titan Crystal or a limited time pool at some point in the future. I think he'd be just fantastic for that. And then last, but certainly not least, we have Mystic. Mystic is, again, another class with a lot of strong characters. There's Juggernaut in here, who probably shouldn't even be in here. There is Werewolf by Night, White Tiger, Sasquatch. Lots of good Mystic characters in here already. Although, I think it is probably time that we see one of two champions. I have two picks here, and you can maybe be the deciding factor on who is really my mystic pick. 
But I'm between Clairvoyant and a Absorbing Man. I almost said Absorbing Man. <laughs> I'm between Clairvoyant and Absorbing Man. I think the more realistic play would probably be Absorbing Man because he needs the SIG. And he really needs the SIG at a high level to feel good. Of course, he's got the utility and the damage and all that on Awakened, but he loses out on this regen, which is massive for defense. I mean, the regen basically is what makes him a defender, aside from the scary immunities and the burst damage. The regen is what makes him a defender. So I think Absorbing Man would be a perfect Mystic 7-star. I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen him already, just because the Mystic class has so many insane 7-stars already, to just name a couple. You know, Juggernaut, America Chavez, Werewolf, White Tiger, Kushala. These champions, I would all say, are close to, if not better than Absorbing Man in certain metas. Specifically like Kushala and maybe Werewolf. Because of just how they handle defenders in different ways. But Absorbing Man, I think, would be a perfect candidate for a limited time pool or the Titan Crystal. I think I'd prefer him in a limited time pool because... The lower the pool of characters, the higher the chance you can awaken them. And Absorbing Man really wants to be awakened. So I think my overall pick is, is Absorbing Man. But I go back and forth between Absorbing Man and Claire. Because Claire was in the original Titan Pool vote. And she got changed for Juggernaut. Who is arguably a more damaging, design-eating or design space eating character than Claire would be. Claire would be insanely powerful, doesn't need to be awakened, so much utility, so much damage. She'd be a perfect Mystic 7 star. Probably the best, if not one of the best Mystic 7 stars. But we got Juggernaut instead of her, and now we're living in a 7 star Juggernaut world. I know I contribute to that problem. I have him up at 7 star rank 3. Not because I like to be toxic, but because I like to save time, especially for Battlegrounds and questing. He's just too good for it. But that's besides the point. I think overall, I would lean towards Absorbing Man if I had to pick one. But him or Claire would be amazing 7 stars. And honestly, one of the stupid reasons I want to see Absor Absorbing Man as a 7 star is because I think his model would look so good with a 7 star border. Kind of like how Onslaught and Prowler look amazing with it. I think he would look great with it too. But... Yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I just wanted to do kind of a talk, a, a, a voiceover, and not as much fighting, just a lot more talking and some dialogue rather than just me doing a voiceover for clips that I've already recorded. This is all real time doing this recording. So I hope you enjoyed this style of video, and if you want to see more of it, please let me know in the comments down below. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button if you have not already. Hit the bell for notifications if that's something you're into. And like the video because every like helps me out, helps the channel out, gets the word out there, you know, shows more people the content that I'm making. So we're on the road to 50,000. I can't speak. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers. So every subscriber helps and you're doing your part and I appreciate that. So thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.